Hey guys, this chess puzzle is so ridiculous that there's another chess puzzle inside of this one. So what I mean by that is one of the lines in this puzzle leads to a position which could be its own puzzle by itself. And so it's absolutely ridiculous. We're going to take a look and try to understand what is going on. Let's get started. All right, so real quick before I jump into the puzzle, let me just explain white is going forward. So these pawns are going this way. Black is obviously going this way. It is white to play and win. And before I say too much more, if you'd like to pause and think through maybe what's going on and what you think white's winning idea could be, feel free to do that. Although I have to warn you, this is not an easy position to understand right from the beginning. But if you'd like to go ahead and pause and then we'll talk about what's going on. All right, so if you had a chance to do that, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. So first of all, the big problem for white here is this pawn becoming a queen along with the rook combination on the really undefended king. So for example, if we try to push this pawn forward and get a queen, we're going to lose immediately because black's going to simply get the queen first. And now it's just mate in, uh, what is it, mate in five. And so here's the line for you. The rook comes over, the queen takes our knight, check check and checkmate okay we have no way to stop that if black is allowed to just simply get the queen all right so even though we can get a queen it doesn't really help us all right so let's go back so we can't, we know that we can't allow this and so we have to prevent it and we have kind of two options of, of course we can't use our king because black uh, just gets the queen anyway the rook is defending so we can use our knight here or we can use our knight here so first of all knight to d2 doesn't work because the rook slides over and pins us okay so it's the threat is again renewed, and if we try to play king to e2 to stop it, black simply captures, and yes, we can take the rook, but then black gets a queen. That's actually going to be a draw, uh, because we do get a queen at the end of that, but black's going to be able to continually put us in check. So this is not what we're trying to go for, because obviously we would like to win. All right, so we can't get a queen, we can't play knight d2, we can't play king e2. That only really leaves the other option, knight to e3, to stop the queen this way. Now at this point, black's going to get the queen, force us to sacrifice our knight. The only other thing that would make sense for them to try would be rook to b4 to try to prevent us from getting a queen this way. But now we can simply play knight to d7. And we're not only supporting the pawn threatening now, we're also making way for this pawn to move forward. And it's just too much for black to, to handle. We've got our knight nicely positioned to stop this. And with these two pawns coming down, black is going to be losing. So the only thing black can do is get the queen, put us in check, and force us to sacrifice the knight. All right, so black takes here with check, and now we have to make a decision on where do we move our king to. Now, this one's not too difficult, but if you'd like to pause and think through what's the best move for our king, we have three options, and only one of them really makes much sense. So which one should we play? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the correct move is king to e2. And the reason is we want our king to be attacking the rook. If we go somewhere else, let's just say king to d2, because we're not attacking the rook, it kind of give, gives black you know, free reign to do whatever they want. And they can simply play bishop to h2. And now they have the bishop stopping our pawns. The rook is also stopping this guy. And we actually don't have much to do here. So... If we play king to e2 instead, well, now black can't just play bishop h2 because we simply take the rook and we're going to win because we have so many extra pawns, right? So what does black need to do now? Well, they have this. Well, first of all, let me just mention if they try to take our pawn, we simply get the queen, right? So that's kind of the, the issue for black. So what does black do? Rook to f2 check. And again, we have to make a decision. Where should we move our king? Now, again, our move is kind of similar. We don't want to go uh, to d1 or d3 because we're not putting any pressure on the rook and they can simply go for the same plan that we just kind of mentioned and, you know, all of our, our pawns are stopped. So we need to keep the pressure on the rook, but we don't want to step into the discovered check because now rook takes f6 is check. Black's going to take our knight, stops all of our pawns, and we're going to be losing, right? So the only move really left is king to e1. And again, uh, we're keeping the tension on the rook so that if black tries to play bishop h2, stopping these pawns, we simply take the rook. Okay, so what is black going to do at this point? They need to stop the pawn from becoming a queen, right? If they try to play king to a7, we can simply play knight to d7. Again, like I mentioned, and it's going to be too much for black to, to really deal with this. For example, after rook to b2, we simply push f7, and we've got two threats uh, this guy is defended by the knight, and so black can't really deal with everything. So that was the move king to a7. So what does black need to play? 
rook to b2. So they're stopping this pawn with the rook, and they actually have an interesting idea um, to follow up. So first of all, we, it's our turn. Okay, we have to make a decision. How do we make a threat? So we can try knight to d7, which is kind of what I mentioned before to kind of make way for this pawn and, and threaten here. Or we can play knight to e6. And this is actually the crazy move that we need to play. And you're going to see why. You're going to see why knight e6 instead of knight d7 in just a second. So let's move forward here. Okay, so at this point, black is doing okay here. They've stopped this pawn temporarily. But we are now threatening to push this pawn. So black has to figure out, okay, how do I stop this? And you might say, well, they can play bishop h2 to stop this and then try to use the rook to stop this one. The problem is after we play f7, the rook can't go there because our king just takes the rook and the rook has no way to, to get to that to cover that square right it can't go here and it can't go here so that's black's problem but black is obviously not out of tricks and plays the move bishop to f2 check and we have to decide where do we go with our king we don't want to go here because now black plays bishop g3 they get control here and if we push this guess what check right the rooks is forking our pieces here so we need to move our king this way so king to d1 all right now black plays bishop to g3 and this is different because now when we play f7 black can play rook f2 remember last time our king was kind of covering that square and the bishop was over here but now it's it's different so what has black done well they've got the bishop stopping these guys they've got the rook stopping this guy and it looks like Black's done a pretty nice job of stopping our threats. So here is a really nice moment for you guys to pause and think through what is White's move here to continue down the winning line. Well, if you had a chance to pause and look at that, uh, if you found this one, congratulations, super nice move. And once you see it, you're going to be like, what? Um, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Knight to F4. And it's like, okay, we're giving up our knight for free. But here's the thing. The bishop needed to stay on this diagonal to stop this pawn. The rook needed to stay on this file to stop this pawn. But guess what happens? If either piece takes, let's just say the bishop takes, it blocks the rook from stopping that, that pawn. Yes, the bishop is covering this one, but now we can just get a queen here. And the other way, it stops the bishop from guarding this one. And so we can just get a queen here. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hold on a second, Nelson, there's a little tactic here that you're missing, right? The rook can come back with check, and you're absolutely right. There is this tactic, check, it unleashes the bishop on the queen, and it looks like black is doing okay. But wait, here is where it starts to get really interesting. We play king to e2, and if, if black takes our queen, we simply take here, and guess what? This guy is becoming a queen, okay? Uh, the bishop can't stop it. So what does black do instead? Throws in this check, which might not seem like much, but there's actually an amazing idea behind this. Okay, let me just show you. King to e3. Now they take our queen. And you're probably thinking, well, I'm still taking the rook. How did that help black? Let me show you how. After we take the rook, I, I don't know if you remember this, but in the last position when we took the rook, it was over here. Let me actually go back and show you that. So uh, in this line right here that I just showed you, we took it, our king was on F1. Going back to the current position, if we take the rook now, look at the difference. Instead of it like being like this, it's like this. And you might say, that. what does that mean? We still have the queen and black still can't stop us, right? Wrong. Black has the amazing move. The amazing move, bishop to A7. And this is what leads us into the puzzle within the puzzle, okay? So we've already kind of started the main puzzle, and here we are on this position, and this is like a mini puzzle inside of that one, all right? So what, what's going on here? What's the deal with this bishop a7 move? Well, basically, black's idea is that we're about to get a queen, right? And when we do, black's going to take here with a fork, forcing us to take the bishop, otherwise we lose our queen, right? Uh, but once we take it, guess what? This is probably the most amazing stalemate that you've ever seen. Black can't move, but they're not in check until it's a stalemate and a draw. <laughs> amazing, right? So that's Black's idea. And some of you who've been watching these videos for long enough might say, wait a second, wait a second, Nelson, what about an under promotion, an under promotion to a bishop? Now we can't do an under promotion to a rook because we still get forked. So that doesn't help us, right? But we could do an under promotion to a bishop. 
And now you're probably thinking, okay, if the bishop takes check, we simply take here. And guess what? The king can't go to save the pawn and we're going to win. It has to move this way. It's like a zugzwang. And then we go and get a queen, right? Wrong. So check this out. We go back here. Once we get the bishop, black doesn't have to take. They can play this move, bishop to b6. Which at first glance, it's like, what, what is going on? What if we just take the bishop? Well, the king is going to take. We have to move our pawn or protect our pawn or it's going to get captured, except we can't. It's on the wrong color of our bishop. We can't defend it. And our king's too far. And if we move it, it just gets captured. And this is a draw. So going back here, we can't take the bishop. Can we do anything else? Bishop to d6. And what we're doing is saying, you know, wh what are you going to do if you're black? If you try to come here and take our pawns, now I'm going to play c takes b6. And it's different because we got this move in. So now if you take a pawn, let's say you take this one. I'm going to push and it's defended. Remember before we couldn't defend it. Or if you take this pawn, I'm going to go here and it's defended. And guess what? This is a win now. So very clever idea, but black's not out of tricks yet. Bishop to a5 and check this out. If we try to push, it looks great. We've got two pawns. We've got a bishop. Everything looks good. Boom. King to b7. King's going to go to c8 and just sit there and never move. And all black is going to do is move the bishop somewhere around the board and just keep moving it and never move the king. The pawns can't push forward. Absolutely amazing, right? So just to remind you, because you might have gotten lost in that, at least I got lost when I was following this uh, in my head. All of this happened after you know the main study we were looking at, after the king captured here, black played the amazing move bishop to a7, which is a draw. And, you know, even though we have all these pawns, one of them can become a queen or a bishop or whatever we want, there's no way to win, which is mind boggling, right? So black saves the game with a draw. So let's go back a second and say, well, how, how are we going to win then? If we take the rook and we know that bishop a7 is a draw, what can we do instead? So here is another opportunity for you guys. If you'd like to pause and think through what in the world could we possibly play here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is the amazing C7. We push the pawn forward, and there's a couple of points. First of all, if the bishop takes it, uh, now we take the rook. And remember that crazy stalemate trick that black had before? Well, it doesn't really exist anymore. What are they going to do? Move their bishop here? We could just take it. Move their bishop here? Fine. We, we get a queen. There, there's no crazy trick. And they're still, you know, still can't go there to stop our, our pawn. So that little move changes everything, right? Also, going back, you might say, well, hold on. What about king b7? And the king is just stopping it. Well, now uh, we can simply trade and then take the rook, and we still have this guy. So there's there's really no moves for black. Uh, at this point, it's after c7, um, it's just over. They, they have to take it, but then, like I said, we take here, and black's out of tricks. We finally win the game so i mean amazing stuff right like th this this little idea of bishop to a7 with the stalemate trap insane and the only way we can win is by sacrificing this pawn so congratulations if you found that um, i hope you enjoyed that study i know when i saw it I, I couldn't believe it there was a study within a study so really fascinating stuff uh thank you guys for watching as always stay sharp play smart and take care